This is the third and final video in our exploration of how to use a TCP link for ATIM with a special firmware as an endpoint that will allow you to inject mouse and keyboard into a destination server. And all of that is done because on the backside of many of our products, like a PC view, which is the one I'm demonstrating today, on the backside of these products, we have a USB port. So you see over here, PC view, a USB hub that has a mouse and a keyboard and another keyboard, by the way, added to it. Uh, so yeah, you could have multiple keyboards and multiple mice and they would you know, all work and connect and so on. Um, this one is connected into the backside of the PTC view and uh, then using the core Skahoi KM server, it will find these devices. That's what we'll see today. So in the wiki article that documents this, found on the wiki skahoi.com, you'll see it right here. This is the device core we'll be using today. And as the device core, its main function is to give you a way to select your channel, because here we are actually high performance transferring mouse and keyboard to multiple endpoints. All right, let's go. We will search up the uh, core Skahoi KM server, just enter it here. Whoa, there were some log output of interesting formatting. Um, oh, wait, we won't start it here. We will actually start it from over here. You should always do that when you add device course using reactor, you add a device over here and then you search it up. So KM server and you will find it right there. Um, we'll pick the one called mm, keyboard mouse. Uh, device ID number one is fine. There can only be one of these at a time. The server port I suggest we change just because we are already from previous videos set up with this server port as the one that our endpoint is talking to. So it will be more convenient for us if we just stick to that. So we'll do that. And um, then in here, oh, sorry about that. That was exactly the same place, but that edit button, like this is like globally the device core settings determines how many channels we have to uh, work with. If you open the parameter list, you can also see that we have uh, ways we can uh, see what is the, the, the current channel, what is um, the uh, uh, channel connected. We can even test the channels and so on. So there are a few things we can play with. Maybe we get a chance to do that in this video. We'll see. But anyway, we'll just create a new custom configuration. So we do that. There we go. And um, basically with that, I would like to, to make a camera selector. But before we get to that point, I think uh, it could be useful to look at the lock of the keyboard mouse here. So if we go to packages to this one, yes. Okay, now um, it seems like it has found my thing. I'm sorry for this little messy output. If we scroll up, it apparently detects um, our gaming keyboard, our mouse. And it is uh, also seeing a TCP connection coming from the TCP link for ATEM with a special firmware. And then these uh, things are probably going to disappear by time. But anyway, if I press keys on my keyboard, will I see some output? Nah, OK, I got that disabled. But we will see it over on the serial output of the TCP link for ATEM. Because if I press a key on the uh, keyboard, you see that it is detecting that. And if I move the mouse, whoa, you see it's also detecting that. And in fact, you see that I'm moving the mouse around my screen. Because right now, this is all connected into my computer here, meaning that I am potentially messing up my, my system by moving mouse and keyboard. It's not completely irrelevant what I'm pressing because I'm actually doing stuff here. But you see the performance is really great. There's, um, you know, high resolution on on the um, on the mouse movements, uh, no problem. So um, yeah, point is proven on, on that account. And for the keyboard, it's, uh, it's uh, yeah, basically the same. If I um, type stuff on the keyboard, you can see this is uh, and hold down shift if I want, I get various characters typed into this input field down here in the bottom. Okay, so great performance on that. Now, one of the points is that we have a channel and this little number that is a part of the message is actually telling this one that we are currently talking to channel number one. And if I press reset, notice that this device in its initialization exposes to us that it is listening to channel number one from this server. So if I change the channel on the uh, PTC view to channel two, I won't see any reaction. And that's kind of what I wanted to show you because we could now take these buttons here on the configuration and then, um, okay, let me see. 
Uh, we shouldn't probably use batch editing. Let's do this one instead. Okay, um, I'll show more. I'll go to my um, keyboard mouse server here. I'll take the parameter I want to select. Let me see. The current channel. I will um, see this is not. I don't want to do a, a change by step. Well, change by step, you can do that. A change by step means that on the sides of this one, I'm now changing my channel. Okay, let's 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 try that. Okay, so if we go over here, and now I'm on channel number one. Okay, so I I press a key, and we see that is channel number one. If I change to channel number two, then I don't receive anything because nothing is now sent to this guy. But if I actually I think server one channel equals two, I think I can do that and then reset. Maybe if I remember correctly, otherwise we'll need to check what is actually the yes, you see, I changed it to channel two. So in fact, now that we are on channel two, and I press keys on the keyboard, I am receiving this to channel two. But if I go back to channel one, another similar device like my TCP link for ATEM connected to a different system would then listen on channel one. Okay, so channel one, channel two, etc. This can all be set up nicely inside of um, Reactor on your... So you can use your Skyhoy panels as a channel selector. Either in this case where it's a single key or if you change it over, and this is just standard stuff inside of um, um, Reactor. We can change it set value number one on this one. Um, so I think if I leave that and then I can copy this and paste it over these two guys, uh, change the value from, you know, to like two, and then I can type in channel two here to have a label. I can do the same here, channel one. And for the final one, we will have channel, not four, but channel three. Okay, super nice. Now I have these keys working between these channels. Um, in fact, if I have them listening or not, it uh, could also be an interesting um, uh, case, actually. So now we venture, venture into a little more advanced uh, land. I can create a um, new conditional feedback here, and I could call it um, block if not connected. Okay, so basically this uh, feedback, if I put it in, I'll just um, see if I can type in. Oh, wait. It's... Um, a different color would be one way to see it real quick. But basically what I want to do is to say if the device keyboard mouse on the, let me see, channel connected is true if a channel has an external client connected to it. Okay, and that channel would then be channel number one. That is one, two, three are the number of channels that we have set up in the device core configuration. If that equals true, Okay, then it will um, light up in red, um, which means that if I had this conditional feedback set on the other ones as well, which I am too lazy to try and do by manual means. So I'll just copy this feedback conditional uh, or conditional feedback over. So I'll just copy this guy to like the first one, which definitely is different. So just do that and Put that in here. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Uh, we also need to set the channel. It is channel one, which is true. Then it should be red. Ah, that actually means that I made a mistake in the other one. Ah, uh, uh, yeah, so this is channel number one. Sorry. Okay, let's go to channel number two because channel number one is not connected. We changed it over to channel number two, remember? And I paste this one in here. I can now change this to channel number two. Okay, and then we have actually channel number three here. So we need to make sure that this is reflected in this code. Okay, so channel one, two, and three. So this is now lighting up in red. It could be green instead if it was a way for me to basically show that, okay, this one is connected and the other ones are not. So um, yeah, let's change it to green. Uh, let's do it using the UI. That would be fairly easy to just, you know, change it to green. We can change uh, this one to green from red to green in case it ever comes up uh, as an option. And this one to green. Now we see green as the indication that this channel actually does exist. 
Okay, guys, so uh, basically that is like what the keyboard mouse device chord does. It just, it primarily works as a way for you to integrate selection of the channel in on your Skyhoy devices. And behind the scenes, it is working as scanning the USB input over here for keyboards and mice. And that second keyboard, just give me a chance to find it. I have it right here. And I think if I add it, if I turn it on, then we'll see just in a moment that we have a document here and I can type stuff in from this keyboard or from this keyboard down here and I can move the mouse around. High performance sent over to the channel that I selected, which was, sorry about this, channel number two currently being set up with my um, endpoint that is plugged into my computer and receiving these commands, turning them into mouse and keyboard movements. Thanks for watching this series. I hope it was useful. We are so excited about the feedback you can provide about this and how you see this could help you to use a Skahoy product to move mouse and keyboard to your servers somewhere. Um, we have put it in, in your hands out here right now and we are excited about the feedback you can provide so we can add even more features if necessary.